In recent years, alkaline water has started to gain a little bit of traction in the Western world. Not only are there countless bottled alkaline water brands, but there are also companies who make machines called water ionizers that can be hooked up to your faucet at home and alkalize your tap water through the process of electrolysis. People who drink this water claim that it has a plethora of health benefits, from being able to improve digestion to curing chronic illnesses. The leading water ionizer brand is Enagic, a Japanese company that has been around for over 45 years and is better known by the name of the water their machines produce, called Kangen Water. One thing that may contribute to their notoriety is their direct selling business model, which was implemented in 2003 when Enagic entered the US market. The specific type of direct sales used is multi-level marketing, which, according to the US Federal Trade Commission, is when salespeople who are not employees of the company but are rather usually treated like independent contractors distribute a company's products or services for them and can also recruit other people to become distributors for the company as well. Inagic pays distributors commission based on how many products are sold directly by them or by the people they've recruited under them, called their downline, as well as what rank they are in the company. More on that later. Because the majority of the advertising and promotional content shared about the products is through people who are considered independent contractors, these distributors can make claims about the water that have not been proven through scientific studies, and Enagic is not responsible for any false information that's put out there. This leads to distributors not only in Enagic, but in many multi-level marketing or MLM companies making unsubstantiated claims about their products' abilities to reduce, prevent, or cure certain diseases and ailments. Since distributors earn commission by making sales, they are incentivized to spread what they usually don't know is misinformation about the product's abilities. Because they often rely on testimonials rather than science-based evidence, eventually, just like in a game of telephone, anecdotes can become the foundation for what is provided as proof that a product cures cancer or can help you lose weight. If you were to ask consumers of Kong & Water why they think Enagic is the leader in the industry though, they might tell you a different story, and they might be slightly angry that anyone would question the quality or abilities of their machines, as Kong & Water users are often quite evangelical about the product. They might tell you that Enagic sets the gold standard, that they have the highest quality ionizers on the market, and that's why some of their machines cost upwards of 6,000 US dollars. They might point to all of Enagic's prestigious certifications or explain to you that you can actually take this water through airport security because it's medical grade water that's used throughout every hospital in Japan. You might of course hear a story about how Kong and Water cured someone's lifelong dermatitis or made their gastrointestinal issues go away within weeks. Maybe the person telling you the story also claims to become a multi-millionaire through selling the machines to other people and tells you that if you invest in this machine, it'll not only improve your health, but it'll make you rich too. And that's what we're going to look at in this deep dive. Not only the claims made about Kong and Water and whether or not the science backs those claims up, but also Enagic as a company and how the business opportunity offered through the multi-level marketing model affects the way in which the products are promoted. Now, if you're thinking, why would I care about the opinion of some girl who looks like she's 12 and has probably never even been to college? What makes her think she's qualified to determine whether or not this product is a scam? I think that's totally reasonable. First of all, I'm not going to say if it's a scam or not. I just want to kind of put the information out there that I've come across and you can determine for yourself whether or not you think it's a scam. Second of all, I'm definitely not a doctor, a physiologist, a chemist, or an expert in any field. Thing is though, the vast majority of the people promoting this product are not experts in any of those fields either. The difference between them and I though is that I'll actually provide sources for the things I say, whereas it's pretty rare to find distributors ever providing a source, and especially a reputable one, for their claims. They typically just rely on personal experiences, and therefore the majority will think that this video hasn't been fairly done because I've never tried Kong and Water myself, but this is not a Kong and Water review video. Testimonies are the least reliable form of evidence, and this video is about evidence, not my personal experience. I've also been told that making this video Video without trying the water makes me biased. The thing is though, we all have biases. Every Kanga distributor that's ever talked about the water has done so from a biased perspective and everyone watching this video will watch it from a biased perspective. That's just how life works. But in my opinion, my biases will be backed up by much stronger evidence than theirs. I encourage you to check out my sources, make your own opinions of them, and of course find other information elsewhere, not to just accept what I say as truth. My intention with this video is not to dissuade you from buying a Kanga machine or any water 
or ionizer for that matter, it's to prevent you from making uninformed decisions. Before we get into the video, I need to make a few quick disclaimers. This video is just my opinion. Everything in this video falls under fair use. No claims made about MLMs in general necessarily apply to Enagic. No statements made by Enagic distributors shown in the video are necessarily representative of Enagic's views. Also, I'll be clarifying things or correcting myself if needed in the pinned comment, so please, if you're going to comment, read that first. I'm going to be referencing a group called the Breakaway Movement, or Breakaway or BAM for short, throughout this video, as that's where the majority of my information regarding what the distributors are saying about the products has come from. BAM is an online training platform and community that teaches people how to start their own online businesses through becoming distributors for Enagic. I originally intended to just make a video about them, but I had so much information that I had to split it up into two parts, so a lot of the statements that I'm Thinking about distributors are kind of based on things that I've seen in their group and sometimes elsewhere as well. So with that all being said, let's go back in time a little bit and take a look at where this all started. According to the Molecular Hydrogen Institute, Water ionizers were invented in the early 1900s, though they didn't start to rise in popularity until the 50s, and even then it was mainly in Japan. In 1974, Enagic's predecessor, Japan Shigemaku, was established according to the Enagic Museum, but according to Enagic's corporate history page, their precursor was Sony's specialty trading operation. Either way, the company eventually changed the name to Enagic in 1990 and began selling Kong and water, which means return to origin in Japanese. In 1998, they developed their eight-point commission structure, which wouldn't be implemented into the company until five years later when they opened the Los Angeles branch and switched to direct selling. Today, they have 40 locations in 23 countries. Inaja currently sells seven water ionizing machines, ranging in price from $1,980 to $5,980 US dollars, their most popular ones being the Leveluk SD501 for $3,980 and the K8 for $4,980. Now, the machines do not simply make water more alkaline. The K8, for example, produces seven different pH levels of water, ranging from about 2.5 to 11 pH. The acidic 2.5 pH is promoted as being more effective than regular water for removing pesticides off food, as well as being a useful cleaner and disinfectant that is used in Japanese hospitals, which is what is sometimes said to be what gives Kangen water their medical device status. The 6.0 is referred to as beauty water and can be used externally on the skin and hair, whereas the more alkaline pHs are used for drinking, and these are just a few of the dozens of proclaimed ways to use the water. Some people are also under the impression that Kangen machines are just really overpriced water filters, when in fact it's listed that the only thing they actually filter out is chlorine. Instead, the other main selling point of water ionizers, besides their ability to change pH, is that the electrolysis process creates electrolyzed reduced water, or ERW for short, and hydrogen-rich water, or HRW. ERW is water that has been exposed to an electric current called electrolysis, which separates the charged particles, and HRW is when there's hydrogen gas dissolved in water. Consumers claim that Kangen water, when alkalized, has a negative ORP, or oxidation reduction potential, and the lower the ORP number, the higher the antioxidants in the water. The molecular hydrogen in the water, which makes it hydrogen-rich, is also said to act as an antioxidant. Because the water is high in antioxidants, Enagic states that it can reduce free radicals and therefore suppress oxidative stress, which is what is generally said to be why Kong water can fix and cure and prevent so many different health issues. Now, most people who hear this would have no way of being able to determine if that's accurate or not off the top of their head because most people aren't experts in physiology or chemistry, and I'm certainly not either. But some would probably hear that and think it's plausible, while others, especially those who have seen all the claims made about the water, would probably think it's ridiculous, it's pseudoscience, it's snake oil, etc. And I have to admit that was my first impression too. I've seen distributors make so many different claims about what this water can do. Bear with me because this is a really long list. They say it slows the aging process, boosts your immune system and metabolism, is 10 times more hydrating than regular water, supports skin health, cleanses your colon, gives muscle relief, relieves heartburn, indigestion, allergies, pink eye, diaper rash, snoring, eczema, psoriasis, soothes sunburns, cures cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, measles, polio, strokes, keeps your kidneys healthy, neutralizes acid buildup in the bones and all the toxicity in your body, improves digestion, digestion, circulation, and heart health, increases energy levels, helps with acid reflux, acne, arthritis, asthma, athlete's foot, regulating blood pressure, candida, cholesterol, 
throat problems, chronic fatigue, dermatitis, nail fungus, gout, the flu, sinus infections, sore throats, and food poisoning. Helps strengthen bones, maintain normal bowel function, and balance the pH of your blood. Decreases headaches and chronic illness symptoms. Prevents and cures the CV. Can replace weight loss pills. Prevent the common cold and reduce anxiety. Others go as far as claiming it decalcifies your pineal gland, balances your chakras, allows your body to remain in a state where it can heal itself, and is therefore the most healing and high vibrational water on the planet. Some of them truly believe that all water besides kangen is toxic, and many say both bottled and tap water, even if filtered, are very unhealthy. But like I said earlier, distributors can make these claims regardless of whether or not their science to back them up. So as for Enagic, what do they have to say about the benefits? Well, luckily they list all of them right on their website. They say, the benefits of consuming kangen water are the minerals it contains and the optimal hydration it offers. Enticing. There's lots more to say about the science, but we'll save that for a little bit later in the video. In 2003, Enagic came out with their first mineral ion water spa system, the Anespa. Priced at $2,890, it comes with a filter that removes chlorine and bacteria and also contains three types of stones. Tufa stone, Mike stone, and Power stone, the latter two of which I cannot find any information about online, but they are said to make taking a bath or a shower feel like a relaxing in-home spa. The other main products they sell are their Ukon turmeric supplements, Ukon tea, and Ukon soap. A four-month supply of their turmeric supplements will cost you $760. For the same price, you could also get 32 bars of their soap or 600 tea bags. Aside from that, you might decide you want a selfie stick or golf balls with the Enagic logo on them, and you can pick those up from the goods section of their online shop. Like most medical device companies, Enagic also has some wildly diverse side hustles, such as a country club, a table tennis club, their very own hotel, and a shrimp farm, to name a few. Through all these business ventures, they're able to have an annual revenue that's estimated to be between 140 and 200 million, depending on who you ask, and it's not clear if that's globally or just their US revenue. I've also heard that they're on track to be a billion dollar company in 2020, so they're doing pretty well for themselves. Let's go into some depth about possible reasons why. First reason, robocalls. In 2019, Enagic was sued for $27.6 million. According to the Enagic Auto Dialer class action lawsuit, the company violated federal consumer protection law when it used robocalling to contact consumers who had not given their permission to receive such telemarketing calls from the company. Class members can share $21.6 million of that, each receiving $12, meaning there were 1.8 million people they called. Good job. Distributors like to promote that you can take the water through airport security. A lot of people think that they're all lying about that. I think that's a bit far-fetched though, because many of them post pictures of them taking it through airport security. I don't think they would all lie about something that I quite frankly don't really see a reason to care about all that much. I mean, finishing or dumping out your bottle before security and then filling it back up after is not that much of a hassle. Also, whatever method they're using, could be used by anyone with any sort of water because it's not like the TSA people would be able to determine whether it's from a conga machine or not. So kind of a weak argument that I personally don't care about. The terms medical device or medical grade water are often used in promotional content, though I get the impression that most of the distributors have no clue what these terms even mean. They just know sticking the word medical in there makes them sound more credible. I struggled to find a definition for medical grade that wasn't about specific things like medical grade polymers, but according to the World Health Organization, medical device means any instrument apparatus, implement, machine, appliance, implant, reagent for in vitro use, software, material, or other similar or related article intended by the manufacturer to be used alone or in combination for human beings for one or more of the specific medical purposes of diagnosis, prevention, monitoring, treatment, or alleviation of disease, diagnosis, monitoring, treatment, alleviation of, or compensation for an injury, investigation, replacement, modification, or support of the anatomy or of a physiological process, supporting or sustaining life, control of conception, disinfection of medical devices and providing information by means of in vitro examination of specimens derived from the human body. As previously stated, some distributors make the claim that not just any water ionizers, but Enagix ionizers specifically are in every hospital in Japan. Some say they're in hospitals all over Japan, some say they're in over 250 of them, so there's clearly not a consensus on this. But most of the things I've seen have been people saying the 2.5 acidic water is used to sterilize and sanitize surgical equipment, which would fall under disinfection of medical devices. There are others who 
claim that these machines are used to treat patients for various things. According to the Molecular Hydrogen Institute though, regarding water ionizers in general, they say it has also been claimed that the majority of hospitals in Japan use and prescribe ionized water to their patients, but this is also not true. Many medical doctors in Japan have never seen or even heard of a water ionizer being used for hospital patients. There was an early Japanese advertisement that made it appear that this was the case, but it is not. They also say the fact that these units have been classified as medical devices does not offer any evidence for their potential to treat and or prevent disease. But then they say that in the 1900s, the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare also approved the mildly and strongly acidic waters as medical substance. And when the Drugs, Cosmetics and Medical Instruments Act of Japan was revised in 2005, a device for the ERW production was reauthorized as a home management medical device for the improvement of gastrointestinal symptoms. So it being a medical device doesn't necessarily mean that it must have the ability to treat or prevent disease, but machines that produce ERW are apparently effective for gastrointestinal symptoms, and the acidic waters are likely effective for disinfectant purposes. Kangen salespeople rarely specify where their machines are classified as medical devices. If you type in Enagic on the Global Unique Device Identification Database, which can be used to find information about US medical devices, nothing comes up. Also, this site says that Korean-made ionizers are medical devices in Korea, and Japanese-made ones are medical devices in Japan. They say, another fake water ionizer comparison trick is to make claims based on saying their ionizer is the only medical device available. No water ionizers are considered medical devices in the US. The KFDA, the Korean equivalent of the FDA, and the Ministry of Health of Japan both recognize water ionizers as medically useful devices and so will certify them. The fact that Enagic machines are medical devices should not, in my opinion, be a very convincing selling point for them. It should make you question why a medical device company would choose a multi-level marketing business model. It should make you question why this company would want to make it possible for any random person with no qualifications to be able to promote and sell that machine and then have that be their main form of advertisement. I mean, imagine if there was like a pacemaker MLM or an IUD MLM. It'd be a little weird. I know that obviously direct sales is like a gimmick. It's supposed to create this like exclusivity. Oh, you can only get it through me. Get it while it's hot. But I can't think of any real situation where a legitimately good product would best be sold in this way. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that you cannot purchase a machine except through a distributor. You can't go onto their website or go to Target and just buy one. You have to have a distributor's ID number if you wanna purchase one. This is just really odd and not something that's common among the other MLMs that I've looked into. You also cannot purchase a machine without then becoming a distributor yourself. Not that you're required to try to sell or recruit, but you're automatically given a distributor's ID. And since being a distributor means that you're an independent contractor for the company, if you live in the US, for example, you have to give this company your social security number just to buy a machine. To me, there's just something a little bit off about that and I can't figure out how that would be the best, most responsible way to sell a medical device. Another thing they like to say is that Japan is the healthiest country in the world and use that as evidence as if that means that anything made there is automatically amazing. Unfortunately, I'm not even able to find any statistics where Japan is ranked the number one healthiest country. Even if it was number one, I don't think that would matter, but these machines machines are produced in Japan, they're most popular there, most of the research done on ERW and HRW is done in Japan, uh, people say that one in five Japanese households owns a Kanga machine, not that I necessarily believe that. While in Western countries, especially in the US, while they are gaining popularity, they just aren't very common, not a lot of people know about them, there's not a lot of research being done on them here, and that is used as evidence that Western countries are very behind scientifically, especially related to preventative medicine, and that the pharmaceutical industry knows about all of Kanga water's healing properties, but doesn't want anyone to find out because they want people to stay sick so they can continue to make more money. From my research, Kanga water seems to be pretty big with people who are into alternative medicine, and alt-med folks tend to usually believe that since Big Pharma makes money off of people being sick, then they're not to be trusted. I'm not sure how they think alternative medicine makes money because I'm pretty sure they also profit off the sick and water ionizer companies profit off the sick too. Especially since they are promoted as these magical panaceas, a lot of people with health issues end up purchasing these after being told that it could reverse their diabetes or Alzheimer's. Someone who is an order processing person at one of Enagic's location posted on the anti-MLM subreddit about their experience working there and said, countless people with last stages of cancer would come in who would believe that they have cancer because their bodies are too acidic. 
The person said distributors who would advertise the products in the office would basically tell these people that they needed this water, otherwise they would be too acidic and that causes a bunch of diseases. That all being said, I don't doubt that there is corruption or shady stuff going on in the pharmaceutical industry, but there are also health professionals all over the world that don't seem to be big fans of Kangen water and say that it's not the panacea it's claimed to be. You'll also struggle to find a chemist or anyone knowledgeable about chemistry that doesn't say that the claims made about the machines are illogical or unlikely to have many benefits. One redditor asked a professor of chemistry about his opinion of Kangen water and he said, it physically hurts my brain how stupid this is. A woman with a master's in chemistry wrote up some info on the various aspects of Kangen water for this video. I'm not gonna go over it all, but you can pause to read or find the link below. But basically, she says she's dubious of the health benefits and thinks the health effects would be minimal. She also stated that her partner has a doctorate in chemistry and feels the same way. I asked people what their stances on ionized and alkalized water were in the ChemHelp subreddit, and someone with a PhD in chemistry said, it's pseudoscientific nonsense. This is extremely expensive snake oil. Someone replied to them saying, all other chemists and I would agree. I had also linked a page from a website called Aquascams, which has a ton of info relating to water scams and pseudoscience. The author is a retired chemistry professor who has taught courses on the chemistry of water at Simon Fraser University in Canada. One Reddit user replied to my post saying, the article you linked is pretty accurate about the science. It's a quack product designed to prey on the fear of people who don't know any better, often targeting cancer sufferers and people with other terminal illnesses who are desperate for anyone to tell them they can be cured. They often base the ideas of their sales spiels on some unrelated science and misconstrue that their products are supposedly proven to work based on some unrelated study. The study itself is sometimes true in reputable science, just completely misappropriated. I highly recommend checking out Aquascams and looking at the quackery and scam section of the FAQ page, the page on structured water, which is kind of like another name for alkalized water, and the ionized and alkaline water page and reading those in full. But regarding water ionizers, he says, what most of these outfits actually sell are grossly overpriced electrical devices that purport to produce ionized and alkaline water by the process of electrolysis. Many of these water ionizers appear to have their origins in Japan and Korea, two countries whose populations seem to be particularly susceptible to being taken in by pseudoscientific water treatment schemes. In North America, distribution of these dubious devices has depended largely on multi-level marketing schemes that enroll science-ignorant dealers to exploit even more vulnerable consumers while enabling the manufacturer to maintain a low profile to regulatory agencies such as the FTC. And I have to say, I think this is likely why Enagic went the MLM route. Distributors are convinced the company chose direct selling out of the kindness of their hearts because they wanted to offer this amazing business opportunity and cut out the middleman because Enagic is an OEM or original equipment manufacturer, meaning every single product they manufacture is built from start to finish at their company. One of Anadric's mottos is realizing true health, which includes mental, physical, and financial health. So people believe that they chose direct selling to be able to give back to their customers and make them rich instead of making the corporations they would be selling to richer. It's also important to note that just about all of the Anadric salespeople I've been following don't even know that they're in an MLM. They're always saying it's not an MLM, it's not a pyramid scheme, it's direct sales, it's network marketing. They just listen to what their upline tells them and I guarantee somewhere up that line there are people that know it's an MLM but also know that people despise MLMs so they use the terms direct selling and network marketing to deflect the bad reputation that MLM gives a company or a person in one. Because many of these people don't know they're in an MLM though, they truly think that direct sales is a feature and that is a very respectable business model. In reality, the fact that a company chooses multi-level marketing, especially a company that sells a medical device or a purported health product, is not, in my opinion, remotely respectable. Companies know that it allows for personal stories and people's desire to make the product sound as appealing as possible to drive sales and increase the spread of false information. Enagic would be sued over and over and over again if they made half the claims that these distributors are making. And those same claims wouldn't be so widespread if it weren't for the MLM aspect, which encourages people to talk about the product way more than they would for something they weren't making money off of. Anyways, let's get back to aqua scams. Like I said, I encourage you to read this page in full, but I want to read a little summary of points from the ionized and alkaline water page. Here in a nutshell are a few basic facts that I believe anyone with a solid background in chemistry or physiology would concur with. Ionized water is nothing more than sales fiction. The term is meaningless to chemists. Pure water, that is water containing no dissolved ions, is too unconductive to undergo significant electrolysis by water ionizer devices. Pure water can never be alkaline or acidic, nor can it be made so by electrolysis. 
Alkaline water must contain metallic ions of some kind, most commonly sodium, calcium, or magnesium. The idea that one must consume alkaline water to neutralize the effects of acidic foods is ridiculous. We get rid of excess acid by exhaling carbon dioxide. If you do drink alkaline water, its alkalinity is quickly removed by the highly acidic gastric fluid in the stomach. Uptake of water occurs mainly in the intestine, not in the stomach, but when the stomach contents enter the intestine, they are neutralized and made alkaline by the pancreatic secretions, so all the water you drink eventually becomes alkaline anyway. The claims about the health benefits of drinking alkaline water are not supported by credible scientific evidence. Quick interjection, it can be really confusing when people use the term alkaline water because some say that only applies to water that's made through a chemical change like baking soda, which is added to a lot of bottled alkaline waters, um, but some also use that to refer to alkalized water, which is made through ionizing devices. So when somebody is using the term alkaline, you really kind of have to know the context to know if they're talking about like bottled alkaline water or alkalized water made through ionizers. Because if they're talking about bottled alkaline water, proponents of ionizers will say that it's not relevant to ionized water. Anyways, ionized alkaline water is falsely claimed to be an antioxidant. It is actually an oxidizing agent as can be seen by its ability to decolorize iodine. There's nothing wrong with drinking slightly acidic water such as rainwater. Body pH is a meaningless concept. Different parts of the body and even of individual cells can have widely different pH values. The pH of drinking water has zero effect on that of the blood or of the body's cells. And that's something that many proponents of alkaline and alkalized water claim, that drinking higher pH water can raise the pH of your blood or your body. Yet sources like Mayo Clinic say there's no evidence for that. In fact, alkaline water companies and people who drink their water are the only ones I've ever seen claim that the water can change your body pH. But people will build upon this false information with other false information about the 1931 Nobel Prize laureate Otto Warburg, who they say discovered that cancer cannot survive in an alkaline environment. This is a complete misrepresentation of his actual work though. According to Alex Kasprick, a science writer and journalist for Snopes, Warburg's main contribution to cancer research was the observation that cancer cells actually produce low oxygen and high acid conditions, not that they are caused by such conditions in the first place. This is a myth that has been debunked by many other educated people too, but is still being spread around by proponents of alkaline water and alkaline diets who usually only do once they did research. If you really want to deacidify your stomach at the possible cost of interfering with protein digestion, why spend hundreds of dollars for an electrolysis device when you can take calcium magnesium pills, Alka-Seltzer, or milk of magnesia? Electrolysis devices are generally worthless for treating water for health enhancement, removal of common impurities, disinfection, and scale control. Claims that ionized waters are antioxidants are untrue. Hypochlorites present in most such waters are in fact oxidizing agents. Claims that water ionizers are approved for use in Japanese hospitals are misleading. These approvals merely attest to the machine's safety that they will not electrocute you. My understanding is that the Japanese health ministry is highly critical of therapeutic claims made for alkaline water. The intricacies of how alkalized water works is, I'd assume, pretty hard for anyone to understand who isn't already knowledgeable on the topic. I'm not going to pretend that I really know if his claims are accurate or not. I've never even taken a chemistry class, but I'm more likely to trust someone who's taught college courses on the chemistry of water than random MLMers who usually aren't very educated on anything they're saying. I get the sense that they think they're educated and they think they've done a lot of research, but they're usually only doing one-sided research, which is evident from how easy it is for someone like me, a 20-year-old with a mere high school diploma, to be able to debunk so many of the things that they're saying, as you'll see more of as we go on. On the other hand, the vast majority of doctors and other professionals I've seen support Kangen water or ionizers usually have something kind of working against their case for being a reputable source. One girl sent me this video as evidence for Kong Water. It's an hour-long presentation by Dr. Barry Aw. I didn't watch it because there's no sources or studies listed in the description, but I looked the guy up and he's a chiropractor. I watched a video on the Breakaway Movement platform where they brought on a doctor to like a Zoom call. His name was Dr. Steven, but you could call him Dr. Vibe. And he's been using ionizers ever since he discovered them at a metaphysical fair in 2007. And he just so happened to be a chiropractor too. This guy had bought an ionizer from a different brand at first and began giving it to patients. And he said they started having really profound results like immediately within the next day or so. 
Yet, Kangen distributors will probably tell you that every other brand of ionizers are really poor quality and they don't really do anything. Something that ends up happening though when people believe that they or others have experienced extraordinary results from something that is usually considered pseudoscience or is at the very least not mainstream is they begin to distrust science and scientists and traditional medicine and doctors. What's interesting to me though is that the majority of these people who claim that uh, science is outdated and such generally have very little scientific knowledge. They likely couldn't even give you the definition of science or explain the steps of the scientific method that they'll often claim is flawed. Yet they know it's not as good as people think because they have a lot of beliefs that it claims to be pseudoscience, so therefore science must be wrong because it just hasn't caught up with them and their knowledge yet. They tend to think that they, people who probably got B's and C's in high school science classes, and the small amount of doctors who are usually chiropractors that agree with them, are more intelligent and educated than the vast amount of researchers and scientists and doctors that have extensively studied whatever the topic is and come to a different conclusion than them. And this all comes back to the fact that many people value personal testimony over controlled experimentation and peer-reviewed research. And that comes back to the fact that many people are very scientifically naive and it's also way easier to relate to stories rather than studies. But this notion that testimonies are more valuable evidence than studies has many, many flaws to it. First of all, when it comes to Kong and water, a lot of the testimonies I've seen go like this. My cousin had dermatitis all her life, and it cleared within six to seven months of drinking it. So how did this person determine that it was caused by the water if it took six to seven months to happen? Was there not a single other lifestyle or dietary change that occurred during that time that could have caused it? Another example is two people I've seen post about a guy who in the first shot is said that he cured his lifelong cancer through kangen water, and the other girl says it was a plant-based diet in kangen water that cured it. So not only does the story change from person to person, but there were also two different lifestyle changes made, making it impossible to determine which one cured his cancer, if either of them did. The second picture also says he has suffered from cancer five separate times, so obviously the cancer went away in between those times. How do we know it's not going to come back again? And if it does, should we then blame the cancer coming back on kangen water? Like this guy claims that within less than 24 hours of drinking kangen water, his four month old daughter's rash went away. I'm pretty sure it's not uncommon for rashes to go away in that amount of time, but he also has the word kangen in his Instagram username making me think he's probably used it for a while, which I assume means the child also uses the water, right? So he only attributes the rash going away to the water, yet she was likely using it during the first photo too, yet he doesn't attribute her getting it to kangen water. Something else I've seen distributors doing is giving the water to people to try for a certain period of time and telling them they have to drink a gallon or 3.8 liters of water a day. The founder of the breakaway movement said when she was first getting started with her biz, I'd ask the person to take it seriously as well and say, I ask that you please drink at least a gallon of this water a day to notice the actual potential of the water's health benefits. Another girl would let a friend come over to her house and fill up bottles, again telling her she had to drink a gallon a day. This is not how you do an experiment like this. You can't change the type of water you drink and the amount at the same time. Like any scientific experiment, you need to have constants and variables. The constants are what stay the same and the variable is what changes. You only change one variable at a time. If you change more than one, the experiment is flawed. And you can't just pick and choose whichever variable you want to attribute a change in results to. I distinctly remember learning about this when I was in fifth grade, aka 10 years old, so this is very basic science. By not conducting a proper scientific study like one that would be done in a clinical trial, you're kind of setting yourself up to make a post hoc logical fallacy. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that renders an argument invalid, and a post hoc fallacy occurs when one event is said to be the cause of a latter event simply because it occurred earlier. Correlation does not equal causation, so with the stories about Kong and water carrying something in a couple months, you can't logically say that the water fixed the problem because you simply don't know that. And then when it comes to negative experiences, like this person who posted about their grandchildren's teeth being destroyed and another family member developing other health problems due to alkaline water on a page about kangen water specifically, I'm sure kangen supporters would say, well, how do they know it was kangen water that did that? But they fail to apply that same logic to their positive experiences. You also have to take the placebo effect into account, like any well-done clinical trial would do. If you don't know, the placebo effect occurs when a person is given something that seems to be a real medical treatment but is not, yet they have a reaction to the fake treatment. Why does this happen? Well, according to WebMD, one of the most common theories is that the placebo effect is due to a person's expectations. If a person expects a pill to do something, then it's possible that the body's own chemistry can cause effects similar to what a medication might have caused. 
Experts also say that there is a relationship between how strongly a person expects to have results and whether or not results occur. Since a lot of people who buy ionizing machines are easily persuaded by the stories of others, I think it's safe to assume that the placebo effect could be responsible for at least some of the stories of rapid and miraculous healing after drinking kangen water. Many pseudoscientific things also have bizarre backstories that are founded on inaccurate information that are used for like evidence of historical proof for the product's benefits or where it originated from. I was curious about why water would need to be restructured, which is what they claim happens through the electrolysis process by a machine that runs on electricity, which was only invented a couple hundred years ago. And I know that's an appeal to nature fallacy, I understand that unnatural things can have health benefits, but I don't understand the implication made by some that regular non kanga water is like not what we're supposed to be drinking or is inherently unhealthy when from an evolutionary standpoint we should have adapted to the water found in nature enough for non-electrolyzed clean water of course to be just fine for human consumption. I always insist on people insisting on only drinking structured water. For merely $10,000 you can have your water structured so it's like the water found in nature which I can only assume is structured by the water machines found in nature. I asked a distributor about this and since then have seen others mentioning the same thing as well, and I was told about the people of the Hunza Valley in Pakistan. These people are claimed by some to be free of disease and the longest living group of people on the planet, many of them apparently super centenarians living into their 120s and beyond. The woman told me that Kangan water is emulating the water found in the blue zone by the Himalayas, which is where the people of the Hunza Valley live. She implied that the reason they were able to live so long is because it was discovered that the body of water they drank out of was being electrically charged by lightning from time to time, creating structured micro-clustered water. Kangen folks claim that their machines make water micro-clustered, meaning it makes the molecules form smaller clusters than typical water does so it can be better absorbed by our cells, allowing for detoxification and hydration on a cellular level, less bloating, among many other benefits. According to the Molecular Hydrogen Institute though, no valid scientific evidence exists either for its occurrence or for its benefits. Even in the BAM community, the people that they brought on to talk about the science of the water admit that there's nothing to back up microclustering. One girl said it's hard to find a lot of supporting research on quote-unquote microclustered water and that's because microclustering is more of a marketing term. Another guy said one thing that's important that's being slightly misrepresented in the Kangen community as a whole is the term microclustering. On a biological and chemistry standpoint, microclusters will pretty much damage and kill you. They're very bad for humans. What really happens is it microclusters for like a millisecond and then it separates. Anyways, apparently the Japanese took these findings regarding the structured microclustered water found in the Hunza Valley and tried to create a machine that could do the same. Unfortunately, the information the story is built on that the Hunza people are free of disease and live exceptionally long lives is false. According to this New York Times article, the great Hunza secret to old age turned out to be its absence of birth records. The illiterate elders didn't know how old they were and they tended to overestimate their age by a decade or two. And they suffered from bronchitis and a host of ailments like tuberculosis, dysentery, malaria, tetanus, and cancer. An iodine deficiency in their diet caused mental retardation. Children went hungry in the spring as food stores dwindled. The life expectancy for people in the isolated traditional villages, according to a 1986 medical study, was only 53 years for men and 52 for women. Even though the myth of the Hunza people is something that has long since been debunked, there are still many who aren't aware of that and thus build upon the false narrative to sell their products or support their dietary and health beliefs. A common demo video you might see proponents of alkalized water do is pH tests on different liquids. I've watched a few of these and all of them have been, in my opinion, intentionally misleading. Let's watch this one. Um, now I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to drop a few drops into each cup here and you'll be able to see. So. Um, super orange, super acidic, that's Dazani, and then we're going to go into Aquafina, it's going to be the same thing, this water right here, same thing, life water, so this is, it looks like this could be the most, some of the most acidic water that you could drink, and then Gatorade, this, these results are obvious, soda, it honestly doesn't look like this, these waters are even, it's pretty, it's almost as bad for you, soda, and then the tap water right here, so you guys are going to see a difference in the color. So it might look close to neutral, but it's not. The reason why it's coming out this color is because the tap water is federally regulated with 14 plus chemicals in that water and they do that to clean the pipes out. 
Um, but I don't, what about the pipes in your body? Like people that are drinking this water need to know about this. I'm gonna just drip right into the common water now. So you can see an obvious difference. So as you can see, he uses Sani, Aquafina, Life Water, Gatorade, Sprite, Tap Water, and Kangen Water. I'm not familiar with how pH drops work or if it matters how many are going into each, but I found it weird that he wasn't like measuring the amounts and he was just kind of putting in however much he wanted. And if it doesn't matter, then why did he go back and add more to Aquafina? Also, if the test can be compared to the pH scale shown on the screen, why did the Kangen Water he used have like a pH of 14? At the very least, it's 12, but he doesn't actually say which pH was used. The most expensive Enagic machine, the Leveluke Super 501, is the only one that makes a pH of 12, so that's the only machine that could have even been used to get that purple color. And if you look at what they say, uh, the drinking water levels are, it's 8.5, 9.0, and 9.5. Another thing that I believe is that they purposely compare Kangen Water to acidic bottled water brands. If you go watch any other video where bottled water brands' pHs are being tested, you'll see that there are many that have neutral pHs. But in the Kangen videos and photos I've seen, they always use Dasani, almost always use Aquafina, and then they'll throw a soda in there, which at first I was confused about because no one's arguing that soda is healthy, but let me replay a little part of the video in case you didn't catch it. It honestly doesn't look like this, these waters are even, it's pretty, it's almost as bad for you as soda. In essence, he says that bottled water is just as unhealthy as soda simply because they have about the same pH. So I honestly think they just put it in there to create this illusion that pH is somehow directly correlated with how healthy something is. I doubt comparing 9.0 Kangen water to a few 7.0 bottled water brands would really make for that captivating of a demonstration. Another comparison they like to do is regarding ORP or oxidation reduction potential, which if you don't remember, they basically say the lower the ORP, the higher the and accidents, the better it is for you. They compare Kung machines to the same things, tap water, bottled water, soda, sports drinks, uh, or in the case of this one, the woman shares a chart for a different ionizer brand, but I've never seen a chart where they compare Kangen water to other ionizers. I did find this video of a non-Kangen woman doing side-by-side -side comparisons of the ORP of multiple different water ionizer brands, one of them being Enagic's SD501 model. Here's what she says. Okay, well, you know, those aren't bad numbers. Compared to these other ionizers that are half the price, I mean, it just is a no-brainer, I think. The antioxidants are good. I mean, I'll definitely say they're good. Um, you know, they're just not as good as the other machines we've tested so far. On her corresponding blog post, she shows the ORP for each pH she tested, and you can clearly see that the SD501 doesn't do as well as the others that, like she says, are also less expensive. But Kangen folks cannot accept that there could possibly be a better ionizer out there. Because of that, they'll resort to claiming that anyone who says any other brand is better than Enagic is being paid to do so, so they're not to be trusted. And maybe they are, but so are Enagic distributors. So if we can't trust them, why should we trust the Kangen people? And I know there will be people in the comments saying that I can't judge Kangen water since I've never tried it, yet they're all very quick to judge all the other brands even though they've never tried them. They like to say that the high price tags on Kangen machines are because of the high quality they are. I've heard someone say that based on the extensive research they did, the amount of electrode plates that the K8 has, which is eight, is the best amount. Any more is overkill and any less and it's just not enough and all the other brands don't have exactly eight. The problem with that is that the K8 is the only Enagic machine with eight plates. The rest contain between three and seven. So why would Enagic make only one machine with the right number of electrode plates? Like I mentioned earlier, Enagic apparently sets the gold standard and has a ton of certifications. I have to admit the presence of the color gold does make it sound very prestigious, but when you really look into it, those things don't really mean a whole lot. First of all, a gold standard is a well-established and widely accepted model or paradigm of excellence by which similar things are judged or measured. Seems to me like a completely arbitrary term. I don't think there's any organization that's determining which company sets the gold standards for its industry. Let's go through the certifications Enagic has. I'm gonna to try to paraphrase these as much as possible since this video is so long. Up first, we have ISO 9001. This just relates to the management of the company and customer service meeting customer needs. I'm shocked they have this considering how many people I've heard say they have really bad experiences with customer service and mine have been absolutely terrible, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> ISO 14001 just relates to the company sticking to its own personal environmental goals. The certification doesn't even state specific environmental performance criteria. ISO 13485 applies to medical devices specifically and just says the company needs to demonstrate its ability to provide medical devices and related services that consistently meet customer and applicable regulatory requirements. Next up, we have the WQ 
WQA, Water Quality Association, Gold Seal Certificate, and Official Gold Seal Listing. They seem to be two ways to describe the same thing. WQA's Gold Seal Product Certification Program ensures that the product is constructed or formulated from safe materials, the claims listed on the packaging are backed by test data, and the product will hold up under normal usage conditions. So it's good that the products are made from safe materials and are durable regarding the claims on the packaging. I was able to find a few pictures, videos of packaging, but not a whole lot. As you can see, the top of the box doesn't list any claims about benefits, while the front might in that really small writing, but I don't know, and then the side is blank. Given that they're not sold in stores, I don't see any reason for health claims to be listed on the packaging, and if they were, it'd probably just be the same things that were listed on the website. Next, it's listed that it's a member of the Direct Sellers Association, or the DSA. This is supposed to make it sound like Enagic is part of some elite exclusive group because there are only 140 members that were part of it in 2017 out of the thousands of direct selling companies that exist. The DSA is a lobbying group for MLMs and other direct selling companies though. Being a member of the DSA does not mean a whole lot. The MLM Advocare was a member before it was shut down for being a pyramid scheme. Truth in Advertising found that over 97% of DSA members had distributors that made false income claims in 2017. An income claim is just a statement of how much income you've earned or how much others could earn in an MLM without providing the company's income disclosure statement, which lists the average distributor earnings. Not all companies put out disclosure statements, Enagic being one of those, which many consider to be very shady. It's against FTC guidelines to make income claims, but clearly it's not well enforced. Back in 2006, when the FTC proposed this rule that would require sellers of business opportunities to disclose average incomes, references, and other information crucial to a decision on whether or not to participate, the DSA and its members issued appeals to millions of MLM participants to use their form letters to write in objections to including MLM in the rule. Unsurprisingly, the Enagic folks I've been following make income claims on a very, very regular basis. I'm sure most of them have no clue that they're not allowed to make them, and others don't care. Anyways, a certificate of recognition Enagic has is the DSA Code of Ethics Communication Initiative, which doesn't mean a whole lot considering Advocare got the same recognition and now they've been determined to be a pyramid scheme, so the DSA certifications are pretty worthless in my opinion. Next up, registration for Kangen Ukon Certificate of FDA Food Facility. This is just a legal requirement for the Ukon supplements. They also have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are BBB accredited. The link takes you to Enagic USA, which has a C-minus rating and is not BBB accredited. The Bureau says, BBB ratings represent the BBB's opinion on how the business is likely to interact with its customers, and it says the C-minus rating is based on the fact that Enagic hasn't responded to three complaints. Since the rating is no longer A+, they just changed it to say as of March 7, 2016, but the distributors don't pay attention to that and still think Enagic has an A plus rating. They have their medical device manufacturing license issued by Osaka Prefecture. This is just proof that it's licensed to be a medical device in Japan. The next one is their medical device marketing authorization issued by the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare of Japan. The document certifies that Enagic is licensed in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 1, article 12 of the Pharmaceutical Affairs Law of Japan. I can't find exactly what that says, but this document has an overview of it and it seems like it's just making sure medical devices are made in accordance to regulatory requirements like product safety, quality assurance, and actions for incident and recall. The registration certificate of Kangen Water and Change Your Water, Change Your Life are the next two, and that's just proof that they trademark those terms. They have a certificate of registration of copyright or something. I don't know how copyright certificates work, and the document is blurry. Next is the eight-point business model trademark, which shows that they have patented their MLM compensation plan, which is pretty impressive, right? No? You don't care? Well, distributors love to talk about this like it means something great. Our compensation plan is patented and it's the best in the world. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an Agic certificate for world's best comp plan. Um, also, having a patent for something doesn't mean that it's high quality. A patent is a form of intellectual property that gives its owner the legal right to exclude others from making, using, or selling an invention for a limited period of years. I can't figure out why anyone would care that's patented unless they don't know what a patent is. And you know, if they cared so much about making people wealthy, why would they patent it so no other company could use it and make more people wealthy? Because it's not about being kind and wanting to help, it's about being able to use that term to make it sound like something unique and special. Next, we've got 100 Direct Selling News Global 2011, which says Enagic USA was number 16 worldwide performance for direct selling companies in 2011. 
don't really care. And lastly, the water safety certificate just verifies the water is free of radiation. So my personal opinion is that none of these are that prestigious, they don't justify the high price tag, and they're certainly not evidence for any of the proclaimed health benefits or that they're better than any other company's ionizers. But another justification used for why these machines are thousands more than others is because their employees are paid fair wages. This seems likely since Japan does have a minimum wage that is, according to minimumwage.org, in the top 8% of all countries based on the yearly minimum wage rate. And while they have offices in 23 different countries, they do manufacture or grow all their products in Japan. Since they have a high minimum wage, I'm not sure what an unfair wage would look like in Japan. Enagic employees could be paid really well or they could be just making minimum wage. From what I've read on Enagic US and Enagic Canada's Indeed pages, most people who left comments about pay did seem to feel that they were being underpaid. So. They're not the only brand whose machines are medical devices. There's no indication that they're classified as medical devices for reasons other than for sanitation purposes or acute gastrointestinal problems. They're not used throughout all the hospitals in Japan. Other brands' machines produce lower RPs. Only one of Enagix machines has the correct amount of electrode placed that supposedly makes them better than all the other brands. The gold standard they said is arbitrary. The certificates they have aren't that prestigious. And there's no evidence they pay their employees wages that are any more than what is required by law. But another route they like to go is saying that they're actually not that expensive at all because they'll save you money in the long run. Distributors create these misleading price comparison charts where they make it look like Kangen water is actually super cheap. In this one, for example, the person compares Kangen water to Dasani, Fiji, and Arrowhead 20 gallon drugs. The 40 year cost of Kangen, she says, is $5,038 which makes no sense. I don't know where that number comes from, considering the kit is $4,980. Of course, there would be extra costs like taxes and shipping and whatnot, but I have a screenshot that I believe shows what it costs for someone living in Seattle, Washington to get a machine where the combined state and local tax rate is 10.1%. So that equals $502 in taxes, $23 for shipping and $240 for handling, giving us a grand total of $5,745. Also, I've never seen anyone say that the machines last 40 years. It's always 25 to 30. And then you have to replace the $130 filter every three to six months. So that adds an extra 10 to $20,000 onto that 40 year cost. Then the Arrowhead they say is $43,000 over the course of 40 years. Dasani is 55,000 and Fiji is $257,000. First of all, if you're only drinking Fiji water, you're obviously rich and don't care about the price. Secondly, in really small writing, she says that this chart is made assuming you drink two gallons or 7.6 liters of water a day. Why would she assume that no one drinks that much water? Two gallons is 256 fluid ounces divided by 16.9 fluid ounces in Dasani and Fiji bottles. Apparently she thinks that people are drinking 15 bottles of Fiji or Dasani water a day. Also, these charts always ignore the fact that in certain places of the world, you can drink tap water and just buy a filter that'll cost you maybe a hundred bucks a year. They also ignore that when talking about the environmental aspect. Ionizing machines are, I'd assume, better for the environment than plastic bottles and that's great, but again, there's tap water and cheaper filters that filter out more than just chlorine. Enagic and their salespeople will actually encourage people to purchase pre-filters because of that. Also, there are many places around the world that have like water refill stations so you can reuse large jugs and get clean water from those for, again, much cheaper. Another way they make it seem like Kangen is a super good price is by implying that the water will make you less likely to have health problems. Like this picture, for example. Your health is an investment, not an expense, but it will become an expense if you don't take care of it. $125,000 in medical bills or $4,980 for a water ionizer that lasts 25 plus years. This person is literally implying that Kangen water can prevent you from having any health issues. And I'm sure most people watching this don't even need to see the studies yet to know how irresponsible it is to promote that because that's just not possible. They also talk about how you can save money on all the different household cleaners and all those types of products by using Kong water, usually the 6.0 or the 2.5 acidic water. But I think most people have the common sense to know that you can use like one or two cleaners for the majority of things like vinegar. It's safe, it's effective, it's very cheap. You don't have to have like 50 different things for different parts of your home. Distributors often talk about them lasting 25 to 30 years as another reason that they're worth the price, but when you think of like fridges can last that long too, 
but most people aren't out here buying the most expensive fridge. Generally, when it comes to expensive appliances, people only buy the most expensive ones if they're wealthy. Speaking of fridges, I've seen many people compare Kanga machines to fridges in the sense that they believe that these machines will one day be as widespread and common as refrigerators. Like always, not any water ionizer, but a Nagix specifically. Everyone's gonna have their fridges, dishwashers, microwaves, etc. from different companies, but we're all gonna have a K8 water ionizer on our kitchen countertops. It would certainly be a first. I can't think of any household item where everyone has the same brand. Can't think of any proclaimed health device that everyone has in their home besides a carbon monoxide detector. Can't think of any MLM product that everyone has in their home. Can't think of any company that everyone is an independent contractor for. So combine that all together, one day the same amount of people that have fridges are going to have a $5,000 health device in their home from an MLM company that they're all independent contractors for gonna go on an limb here and say not gonna happen. And the last little justification of cost that we're gonna go over is how much it's marked up from its cost to manufacture versus how much they say it would be if it was sold in like retail stores. So here we have the SD501 compared to four items, tennis shoes, bottled water, DVDs, and buildings, all of which I can only assume were picked strategically to fit the narrative they wanted to go with. Building construction, they say it's marked up five times, DVDs 29 times, bottled water 99 times, and tennis shoes 100 times. The SD501 one's cost to manufacturers $1,400. At the bottom, it says if Kangen was sold in retail stores, they would cost 10,000 or more. And that's not an exaggeration. We're supposed to look at this and think, wow, Enagix ionizers are marked up way less than all these other products without any sources for any of these numbers. First of all, I have a hard time believing that SD501's markup is only 2.85 times, considering the amount of money that is paid out to distributors. The lowest number I've seen is 51% of money made is paid out as commission, the highest is 70%, but 54% is the number that I've seen much more frequently than those. 54% of 3,980 is 2,150, which means 1,830 is not paid out as commission. If the cost to manufacture is $1,400, then only $430 per SD501 is left over. But they also pay out bonuses that couldn't be included in that 54% based on my calculations that go from $3,000 all the way up to $800,000 for hitting certain ranks in the company, as well as monthly residual income for the rest of a distributor's life that can be passed down to their children when they die that ranges from $5,000 to $80,000 a month. So a lot of that $430 $30 has to be going to those and a few other additional incentives and bonuses and educational allowances. But even so, there are many products out there that generally have lower markups than the ones they listed, which is why I believe they specifically chose high markup items to compare. And according to entrepreneur.com, even though there's no hard and fast rule for pricing merchandise, most retailers use a 50% markup known in the trade as Keystone. What this means in plain language is doubling your cost to establish the retail price. So I'd assume most products we purchase are not marked up by 99 times. My initial impression was that the high price was due to the MLM aspect as MLM products generally are overpriced, they need to be. But you might have noticed earlier when I quoted the Aquascam's website, he made it sound like water ionizer companies in Western countries being MLMs is far from uncommon. And upon looking it up, you'll notice that other popular brands like Chanson and Alcaviva also offer business opportunities, but are about half the price. Price. So at the end of the day, I think what it comes down to is that you can charge people whatever you want for a product as long as you can convince them it's worth the price. And Enagic salespeople do that through spreading misinformation and lies. They often use fear mongering to get people to make choices based on emotion by making illegal claims that the ionizers can prevent all these different health issues. I'm sure most have good intentions to an extent. But when you combine unwillingness or lack of knowledge on how to do proper research with a desire to sell a product and get mega rich, it's usually not going to lead to a good result. So let's get into the science and the studies that they believe are evidence for Kung and water and all its health benefits. I want to start by briefly going over a few claims that I just don't have time to go into in depth. Um, so there's this one list that everyone and their dog has on their website called 68 uses for Kung and water, which is a great place to go if you want to learn about how Kung and water can return gray hair to its original color or kill candida or lessen the effects of chemotherapy with no sources ever provided for a single claim. We also have claims like 
If you drink kangen water for about three months, you will absolutely have health benefits for sure. We have people talking about what happens when they stop drinking kangen water for a little bit. Last week, I mostly drank water from flow water filters in gyms and coffee shops. I drank about a gallon of water a day and felt severely dehydrated. If you feel severe dehydration drinking a gallon of water a day, go to the hospital you have a medical problem or you're just being overdramatic. I'm literally having withdrawals from the water. My muscles are so sore, I feel like I can't think straight and I feel so thirsty all the time. It's comments like these that make the other claims hard to believe because it's just so over the top and unrealistic that you could experience brain fog or sore muscles from drinking normal water. <laughs> My favorite ones though are about the CV. Aside from preying on people who have been laid off or lost their jobs due to the pandemic, a lot of these distributors are posting about how the 2.5 pH water is the only thing you need to fight off the CV or it prevents the spread of the CV. So many of them were spreading this misinformation that Enagic had to put out a statement. Strong acidic water has not been tested against the CV and is a violation of Enagic policies and procedures and against the law to claim otherwise. Also, I rarely if ever have seen distributors show any awareness that the 2.5 acidic water has to be used relatively quickly after it's been made. The longer you just let it sit out in a glass squirt bottle on your counter, the less potent and effective it will be. This is also something that seems to be a thing with molecular hydrogen. You need to drink it quickly. The H2 molecules don't just hang out there forever, but we'll talk about this more in a little bit. Overall, as you can tell, Kangen water is being promoted as a panacea, a cure-all, and this is far from the first product that has been claimed by thousands of people to cure hundreds of different things. Essential oils are probably some of the most popular proclaimed miracle cures today, yet the evidence does not support that. So when it comes to Kangen water, if it truly does do all these things that the distributors are saying, uh, we should see that reflected in studies because they shouldn't be making claims that aren't backed up by actual evidence. But as we know, Enagic doesn't claim the water has any benefits besides minerals and hydration and has to tell the distributors they can't make health claims, which in of itself should be convincing enough evidence that these claims are not backed up by science in my opinion. Some distributors though will say that there are over a thousand studies on the benefits of ionized water while others will say there really aren't that many and that's because big pharma doesn't want people to know. I'm not sure how the pharmaceutical industry would have any jurisdiction over which studies are allowed to be conducted or published or whatever they think is going on. I've also seen some people say that there's not that many studies because of lack of funding but if that's the case why doesn't Enagic just fund some themselves? Is it too expensive for them? Maybe they could get one of their distributors making $80,000 a month to pay for some. Whatever the case, from my research, it does seem like there's a somewhat decent amount of studies on ionized water. Specifically, they're looking at electrolyzed reduced water, ERW, or hydrogen rich water, HRW. It seems like so far, most of the studies have been done in animals. There's significantly less human studies. What we're going to be looking at today is definitely not every single study that's ever been done on ERW and HRW, but we're going to look at some links that were sent to me from the first girl I was ever in contact with before even deciding to make this video, who was trying to convince me of Cognitive Water's powers, and we're also going to look at what I kind of called the BAM master list of studies. When I signed up to BAM, I got access to their research Google Docs and figured this one would be a good thing to go through. Between the two, we have over a hundred studies, many of which we'll be able to breeze through pretty quickly. Let me explain why. Some of the studies linked can't be accessed without being paid for. Sometimes they cost upwards of $100. I guarantee these people didn't pay for them. They just read the abstract, determined it, supported ERW and HRW and copy and pasted the link. An abstract is just a summary of the study that's typically available even if the article can't be accessed without paying for it. It doesn't list the details of the study and is therefore not really the best to list as evidence since most people, myself included, are not going to be dropping hundreds of dollars to look through all these studies. When we only have access to the abstract, we often can't determine how many people the study was conducted on, which is called the sample size. If the sample size is really small, it's not good evidence. There are many studies in these lists that have like 20 people in the study and that's just not good enough especially because for the majority of the health issues listed they only link one two maybe three studies you know we didn't conclude that smoking causes lung cancer because of a few studies done on a couple dozen people each we're going to be skipping the cell animal and in vitro studies obviously they serve a purpose they don't just conduct them for the heck of it but they're not really the best evidence i want to go over this infographic that's a rough guide to scientific evidence on the side, it says that it's laid out by strength of evidence from weakest to strongest. First up is anecdotal and expert opinion. 
Anecdotal evidence is a person's own personal experience or view, not necessarily representative of typical experiences. An expert's standalone opinion or that given in a written news article are both considered weak forms of evidence without scientific studies to back them up. Animal and cell studies. Animal research can be useful and can predict effects also seen in humans. However, observed effects can also differ, so subsequent human trials are required before a particular effect can be said to be seen in humans. Tests on isolated cells can also produce different results to those in the body. Randomized controlled studies. Subjects are randomly assigned to a test group which receives the treatment or a control group which commonly receives a placebo. In blind trials, participants do not know which group they're in. In double blind trials, the experimenters do not know either. Blinding trials helps remove bias. And systematic review. Systematic reviews draw on multiple randomized controlled trials to draw their conclusions and also take into consideration the quality of the studies included. Reviews can help mitigate bias in individual studies and give us a more complete picture, making them the best form of evidence. I also want to mention that no matter how much any of these studies support ERW or HRW, they are in a sense cherry-picked because of course in lists of evidence for calling the water, they're not going to include ones that didn't really show as good of results, but there are likely studies that have been conducted that have shown very, very weak or no results at all on these things that we're gonna be looking at. And to my knowledge, there has never been a single study done on Kong and water. In fact, most of these studies don't even use water ionizers. And clinical trials done with different types of products are not necessarily evidence that commercial products can have the same effects as what they're using. When the studies can't be accessed or they're done on animals or cells or in vitro or have a very, very small sample sizes. I mean, very small. Most of these don't even have over 100. So usually under 30, I didn't look at. Uh, when there's no control group, we're just going to be moving on real quick. Disclaimer again, I'm not an expert in any field. I'm not an expert on reading studies. So for the studies that like don't have obvious flaws, they could have flaws that I'm not aware of or just not really be applicable to Kong and water in ways that I can't see. If you are very educated on this kind of stuff, uh, feel free to like message me and let me know and I can add things to my sources. But let's get into it. The first few links from list number one are not studies, but we'll go through them anyways. First is a YouTube video about what happens to blood cells after drinking coffee, Dasani, and coffee and water. It would be an interesting experiment if it had been conducted properly, but he just drinks one after the other, so the results are cumulative and therefore the experiment is not a reliable source to support Kong and water. Next, she links a BAM web class with a guy named Andrew Pruinski. She says, Andrew has done years of research on Kong and water and he explains how a lot of the information he has found is not available on Google or other search engines. I'm not sure why she considered him a reliable source when he's a professional chef and there are no sources given for anything. Regarding the information not being available on the internet, in the call he says he pays for a National Institute of Doctors research subscription, which unless paid for is only available to licensed doctors and physicians. Apparently this subscription is not available online either because if you look that up, there's nothing called the National Institute of Doctors Research which you would expect if it existed at all. Next is the 68 ways to use Kong and water, which again does not list sources, so I don't care what it has to say. She links an article from Dr. Mercola's AltMed website about Google censoring natural health articles and promoting pharmaceutical articles. I didn't read it because you have to sign up for a subscription, but let's assume Google censors things. I don't doubt that they do. Does that mean that the things they're censoring are good things that they just don't want us to know about and are trying to hide from us? Or is it possible that we've studied medicine extensively and AltMed has not shown itself to be as effective and produce the same results as traditional medicine. It's just like on YouTube when someone makes a video denying climate change, it will recommend a Wikipedia article on global warming because that person is spreading false information. Or they'll take down conspiracy videos that promote false information because of the harm they cause to the usually naive and not well-educated people who will view them. So many people have chosen alternative methods for treating diseases when those methods have not been studied or if they have, they haven't shown to have as good of results as traditional methods and therefore many people's conditions worsen or they die when they could have been able to get better help through more traditional methods. Like, Yes, of course, AltMed has worked for some and traditional medicine has not worked for some, but the traditional 
routes have shown themselves to be way more effective than the alternative ones. And we know that because we can compare scientific data regarding different practices and treatments. Next is Dr. Barry Ah explaining Kong and Water, which we already went over earlier. Following him, we have God's Water blog, which is not a reputable source. This person has a vested interest in alkalized water and makes money selling the machine. There's no sources on the page except to two videos. The first video has no links in the description, but the second one does link to the American Anti-Cancer Institute, which sounds like it would be reputable, but just one look at the website and you can tell it's not. The first real thing we have here is a review of research on molecular hydrogen. It's one major flaw is that there are no human studies listed regarding HRW. In all these studies we're going to be looking at in this video, there are three main methods in which patients are given H2 inhalation of hydrogen gas, injection of hydrogen-rich saline, and oral intake of hydrogen-rich water. In this video, we're not going to be looking at the first two because based on what I've read in these studies, the fact that they distinguish between the three and list differences between them indicates to me that the inhalation of H2 and the saline cannot be used as evidence for the HRW. So in this study, the only mention of an HRW study is regarding rodents. This review is on the health benefits of reduced water. One of the studies mentioned is a double-blind placebo controlled study that was conducted on 163 people who had abdominal issues. It lasted two weeks and showed that for the chronic diarrhea patients, the alkali ionized water showed a significantly higher improvement efficacy of 94.1% compared with those who drank purified water, 64.7%. I'm not able to access the full study though, and since many more diseases were a part of it and the review doesn't mention any other specific numbers besides the aforementioned, it's hard to know what to make of the study. I clicked on 10 other study links in the review and couldn't access any of them, so there's no point in going through the rest. She linked a Google folder which has two of the same presentation. The creator of it makes a lot of claims that I don't care about because she doesn't list sources, but then does go through some studies. Number one, effect of electrolyzed high pH alkaline water on blood viscosity in healthy adults. After exercise induced dehydration, consumption of the electrolyzed high pH water reduced high shear viscosity by an average of 6.30% compared to 3.36% with standard purified water. Other measured biomarkers revealed no significant difference between the two types of water for rehydration. So of the four things tested for, three of them had no significant difference and the one that did had a difference of less than 3%. To me that doesn't seem like a huge difference, but I could be wrong. Number two I'll be going over later. Number three is mice and in vitro. Number four I'll be going over later. Number five and six are mice studies. Number seven, reduced hemodialysis induced oxidative stress in end age renal disease patients by electrolyzed reduced water. This one I could hardly understand a word of and therefore just skimmed it. So I don't really know how much my take on it matters. They say that ERW may increase the things talked about in the study. That's all I was able to take from it. And that is something to be aware of. These studies do not conclude that ERW or HRW do produce these positive results. They say they might or they could, which indicates that further research needs to be conducted before any determination is made. Number eight and nine are my studies. Number 10 has only six subjects in the study and no control group. So not the most convincing list. Next is a Google folder with five human subject articles. Off to a good start with number one, which is not a human study, but a cell study. Number two, I'll go over later. Number three is study number seven from the previous list. Number four, I'll talk about later. And number five is the same study as number 10 from the previous list. Next, we have the BAM master list. I wish this wasn't the best link I could find, but the fact that this list of 96 studies is as bad as you'll see shortly isn't a good sign. In my opinion, whoever compiled this is relying on the fact that most people will just look at the title of the study, see a familiar word that the distributor has told them is an aspect of Kong water, and not actually read the study. Or they will just see a list of long links and think, wow, there's a lot of science behind this water. Even if they do read the studies, it won't matter much because most of the links only go to abstracts, the short summary, and you have to click through to another place to get the full thing, or you can't get it without paying. To me, that's just proof that these people aren't reading the study because if they did, why wouldn't they just link to the full thing? Do they not know that the studies contain more info than what's just on the page that they link to? Do they only want people to see the abstracts? Like, what's the strategy there? Up first, we have one study on lactic acid. This is a pilot study, which is a small-scale preliminary study conducted in order to evaluate feasibility, duration, cost, adverse effects, and improve on the study design prior to performance of a full-scale research product. And the sample size is 10 people. Moving on to oxidative stress, this is something I mentioned earlier. Anadric 
says the water can reduce free radicals and therefore suppress oxidative stress, which is generally said to be why Kong and water can do all the things it can do. I don't really know anything about oxidative stress or what it does to the body, so I'm not gonna agree or disagree with that. I'm just gonna go through the studies. First up, a review on molecular hydrogen that I don't have access to. Next is not a review or a study. I'm, I'm not sure what the correct name for it is, but it mainly just talks about the basics of molecular hydrogen. This one talks about inhalation of the gas. Now let's move on to one about hydrogen-rich water. These researchers did two studies. The first had sample sizes of five, four, and five, and the second had 10 and 12 for each of the diseases studied. That's just not enough. The next one says something I found to be very interesting. H2 rapidly disappears. It penetrates the glass and plastic walls of any vessel. However, aluminum containers are able to retain hydrogen gas at atmospheric pressure at refrigerator temperature for a relatively long time. It also says, hydrogen in drinking water is able to stay in human and rodent bodies for less than 10 minutes. So when these people leave their water out in glass mason jars on the counters, by the end of the time they're drinking it, they're probably not really getting that much H2, and even the H2 that they're getting doesn't stay in the body that long, although I'm not sure what that means in terms of health benefits. But this one is a review, so I can't know what the studies in it all are about unless I go through each individually, which I'm not gonna do. It already took me such a long time to go through all these studies, so I'm not gonna go through some of the reviews for the categories that have more evidence behind them, since there are a lot of studies listed in the oxidative stress category. But for the ones I don't go through, since reviews are typically good evidence, I'm just gonna give it to them. So we'll call this one good evidence even though I don't really know if it is or not. Can't access the next one or the one after that. Water isn't mentioned in the next one. The following one is one I said I would talk about earlier. There is a chart that shows 63 disease models and human diseases for which beneficial effects of hydrogen have been documented. At the time of the study, there had been 87 papers done on them, only seven of which were conducted on humans, and four of those seven with water of those four. The first one is one we're gonna go over later, the second is one we already went over, the third I can't access, and the fourth is a pilot study. There's also a section called molecular hydrogen is effective for six human diseases. The first one is a study of 30 patients with diabetes mellitus type 2 and 6 patients with impaired glucose intolerance. Lack of statistical significance, however, may also suggest a less prominent effect in human diabetes mellitus compared to rodent models. So why is this listed? Next study is 20 participants, not double blind, no placebo, and hydrogen rich water was produced by placing a metallic magnesium stick in water, which doesn't sound like how Kong and water works. And that's the interesting thing about a lot of these ones regarding the HRW. Most of them use these magnesium sticks. So if you want these same results, why not just buy one of those? Because they're a heck of a lot cheaper than spending $5,000 on a water machine. And you can also get these types of machines that produce HRW for like 100 bucks, although I can't vouch for the quality of them. Anyways, the reviewers also say, although the study was not double-blinded and placebo-controlled, improvements in biomarkers were much more than those in other hydrogen studies in humans. As this study used a large amount of hydrogen in water, the amount of hydrogen might have been a critical determinant. Alternatively, excessive hydrogen hydration might have prevented the participants from excessive food intake. This is a good example of why a placebo group is so important to have and why correlation does not equal causation. Third one is a study of eight people and one of 21 people, small sample sizes. To be clear, I'm not trying to say these are like bad studies and the researchers don't know what they're doing. I'm just saying they're not good studies for what we're looking at. They're not good evidence for Kong and water in my opinion. Then we already looked at the fourth one previously. The fifth one also uses a magnesium stick. I'm not gonna go through the magnesium ones because you can just buy that kind of stick if you want it. <laughs> the sixth one has a small sample size and was not a controlled study. Moving on, the next one was lengthy and for the long ones, I would usually just search for the word water and read the parts about that. This one doesn't really talk about the water in any way that we haven't already gone over. Next one I don't have access to, the one after that is not about water. The next one only talks about water in my studies, the following one I don't have access to, and the next is a review, so that's good news. Then we have another review. One part of this I did read said, as the effects of hydrogen have become more and more evident from a scientific standpoint, hydrogen rich water is readily available for purchase by consumers. Although sold as a health supplement, the scientific evidence of the effects of these hydrogen rich water products is lacking and products that may or may not have beneficial properties are being sold. Because hydrogen rich water became commercially available before it was scientifically explained and systematically analyzed, Claims of its beneficial effects have become the subject of prejudice scrutiny as no evidence of its effects has been made available. 
Although the fields of research on hydrogen has dramatically increased in recent years, expectations are high regarding research on the physiology of hydrogen and the biology of hydrogen gas molecules. Many questions remain, such as the effects of hydrogen-rich water on living organisms and the mechanism by which the hydrogen molecule works in addition to the suppression of oxidative stress. The next two I have no access to, the one after that is a repeat. Next I couldn't access, this is just a hypothesis for one potential mechanism of how hydrogen does the things it does. Next I couldn't access, next is a review looking at oxidative stress, so that's good. This was also a review, I think, but a shorter one, so I went through it and it only mentioned water in rat studies. The following one doesn't talk about water, this one doesn't even provide an abstract, same with the next one. The next one talks about methods for ingestion of molecular hydrogen. Not a clinical trial, but still has some interesting info in it. These results suggest that the H2 concentration is maintained for at least 7 days without opening the bottle it's being stored in. But the H2 water should be drunk within two hours after opening. In addition, it is important that after opening, the bottle should not contain space for air in order to avoid the reduction of H2 concentration. Again, I can't recall any distributors ever talking about that. The next one, which I think is a review, says, referring to ERW, in 1960, it was applied to medical care as a health beneficial water. In 1966, the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare of Japan admitted that ERW was effective for chronic diarrhea, indigestion, abnormal gastric intestinal fermentation and acid and hyperacidity. They also say accumulating evidence has shown that reduced waters are health beneficial and they suppress oxidative stress related diseases such as diabetes, cancer, arteriosclerosis, neurodegenerative diseases, and the side effects of hemodialysis. Yet, just looking at the brief descriptions of the studies they list as evidence for that, some are rodent studies and some only have a couple studies linked as evidence. And this review was partially funded by Nihon Trim Co. Limited, which is an ERW company, so take these statements with a grain of salt. And the last two studies in the oxidative stress category, I don't have access to. Overall, this was the category that seemed to have the most evidence. The rest have little to none. Next, we have one whole study for Alzheimer's and I don't have access to it. Moving on to cataracts, where we also have one that's not about water. The cellular redox state one is a cell study. The metabolic syndrome obesity one is a pilot study with a sample size of 20 and used a magnesium stick. There were four links for radiotherapy, liver tumors, and others. The first used a magnesium stick. The second is a review, but I said it's a search for the word water in it since there wasn't much for this topic. All the studies relating to water were animal studies or used a magnesium stick or talked about radiolysis, which I don't know what that means, but nothing seemed to relate to water ionizers. And the last two I didn't have access to. The one about chemotherapy is a review. The only time it mentions water is related to rat studies. The first link for autism is a hypothesis. The researcher says it is worthy to investigate the possible effect of lactulose or hydrogen water on autism. It's not really evidence for anything. The next link is pretty much the same thing from the same person, except it's intended to be a letter to an editor. And the third link is the exact same thing as the previous one. Don't have access to the telomere shortening and cancer cells one or the sports medicine one. Moving on to cardiovascular and metabolic diseases. This is a review that does mention water a few times. The first study linked is in mice. The second one we'll look at later Later, when we get to diabetes, then in rats, rats again, rats again, rats again, mice, 20 participant study using a magnesium stick, the one we talked about for metabolic syndrome, that was a 20 participant pilot study with a magnesium stick, but the last one actually had something. 68 patients in a double blind placebo controlled study with untreated isolated hypocholesterolemia were either given HRW or placebo water for 10 weeks and the results seemed pretty good. The only problem is the study doesn't say how they made the HRW, so am I seriously supposed to believe that they didn't use a magnesium stick? Moving on, can access the pulmonary disease one, the cellular senescence and endothelial cells one was hard to understand much of the terminology in, but it says hydrogen rich medium was produced by a high purity hydrogen gas generator, which doesn't sound like a water ionizer. I could be wrong though. There's two listed for leukemia. This study is a cell study and the second link I don't have access to for treating acne. We have an open label pilot study of 25 people. The purpose of the study was to determine the efficacy and the tolerability of the charm system, a handheld device that electrolyzes a water-based sodium chloride salt solution and delivers electrolyzed oxidized water to the skin in the treatment of mild to moderate acne. Does not sound like Kangen water. Moving on to oxidative stress in spaceflight, not sure why this was important enough to be included, can't access it anyways. 
For LDL cholesterol, we have one study with a sample size of 20. That's not good enough, especially when it's only one study listed. Next, we have a few on diabetes. The first is one that I said I would mention later twice. You can't access the full thing through the link, but it was in the human studies Google folder from earlier in full. The sample sizes were 30 and 6 for the two groups studied. Pretty small, but we'll get it anyways. There's two charts which show the things tested for with the HRW group and the placebo group, and there's asterisks next to the things that showed a significant difference over the course of the study. As you can see, no asterisks for the placebo group, but for the HRW group, only three of the 23 things tested for have them. So that's not that good in my opinion. The next link is a hypothesis. The following one is on hamster cells, and so is the one after that. Those are followed by two my studies, and the second one is linked twice, and that's it for diabetes. The two studies on fibrosarcoma are both the same in vitro study linked twice. For reflux disease, we have an in vitro study, but then we have one on gastroesophageal reflux disease that I'd say is one of the best so far. There were 84 people studied for three months and drank 1.5 liters of water a day from an electrolysis device. There was also a control group, and the results seemed to indicate that the ERW was effective for the things tested. That was then followed by a rat study. Next is IBS. There is one pilot study linked with a sample size of 27, and aside from quality of life scores, it didn't seem to me like the alkaline reduced water group had improvements that were much more significant than the placebo group. We have a few regarding hemodialysis. The first two had good results, I think, but they were not double blind and didn't have placebo groups. The third one had a control group, and while it was way too hard for me to understand, I'm pretty sure it had good results. The next one only studied eight people, but the one after that studied 262 people over a 12 month time period. But two of the researchers are employees of a water electrolysis machine company, and the study was funded by that company and General Incorporated Association of Electrolyzed Water Hemodialysis Study Group. The study seem to have good results, but says that further study is needed to conclude the clinical impact of the addition of H2 to hemodialysis solutions. Next one I don't have access to, and the one after that only had a sample size of 21. The next was a review that mentions water a lot, so that's good, but I'm not going to go through it. For rheumatoid arthritis, all three links are to pilot studies. The first one for neurological disorders is a review. The only studies mentioned in it regarding water were ones done in mice or rats or rabbits, and there was one pilot study and another review, which I'm just not gonna go through. Next is a repeat, then a mouse study, then another review that only has animal studies and one human pilot study. Then the last link is to one that's not about water. Parkinson's has three studies linked. The pilot study I just mentioned, one that doesn't list results and makes it sound like the study hasn't been completed yet, even though it was from 2016, so I don't get that. But something it said that caught my eye was, Despite extensive efforts to enroll more participants, the expected number of participants was not met as it was difficult for some patients to consume a thousand milliliters of water a day. And that just shows how important it is for these studies to have control and an experimental group because a lot of people just don't typically drink the amount of water that's required in these studies. So some of the results could be attributed to an increase in water consumption, if not for a control group. And I don't have access to the last one. For angiogenesis, we have one cell study. For hepatitis B, we have one that uses a magnesium stick. Don't have access to the polycystic ovarian syndrome one. Next, we have the second hydrogen molecule biomedical symposium, which links to a report from a meeting. Not sure why this was included. Moving right along, we're on to pH level effect on cancer. The first study says, here we show that oral NAHCO3 selectively increased the pH of tumors and reduced the formation of spontaneous metastases in most models of metastatic breast cancer. NAHCO3 is baking soda, which is what is added to bottled alkaline water, which Kangen drinkers love to hate on. But I guess it's good enough for a study on it to be included to support Kangen water. It was a mouse study anyways. <laughs> then we have a cell study, one that's not about water, and one I can't access. The next one regarding pesticide residues reduction is super interesting. I don't have access to the full thing, and keep in mind this is just one study, so it's not definitive, but in the abstract it says, the efficacy of using electrolyzed oxidizing water, or ERW, was found to be better than that of using tap water or detergent which is likely why the study was included. But it also says, pesticide residues on fresh spinach after 30 minutes of immersion in electrolyzed water reduced, is listing three pesticides, acephate by 86%, Omothoate by 75% and DDVP by 46% for the ERW. But the people I've been following make it seem like it removes all pesticides 100%. And you know, the study could have been flawed, the numbers could be off, but I just find it odd that this was included when it's not really 
that good of evidence for ERW in my opinion. And lastly, tumor angiogenesis, and it's just the same study listed under angiogenesis. So there we have over 100 studies that are being handed out as evidence for Kong and water. Well, I doubt they're really being handed out to that many people because I haven't gotten the impression that that many who are buying these machines have actually been interested in the science behind them and reading the studies. I don't blame them, it's not my favorite pastime either. But I tallied up everything in the master list and put them into categories of things that were good evidence, including the reviews that I didn't go through, ones that I couldn't access and therefore don't know if they're good evidence, and the ones that I didn't think were good evidence because they were on animal studies or used magnesium stick or any of that kind of stuff. And there were eight good studies, 25 I couldn't access, and 83 that did not seem to be good evidence in my opinion. I encourage you to draw your own conclusions from these, but to me, it seems like more research needs to be done before making any claims about the benefits of ionized water, but it does seem like ERW and HRW certainly might have potential to be effective in certain things, especially regarding gastrointestinal issues and possibly oxidative stress as well. But like I said, HRW can be made for way less money and so can ERW through any of the machines that are less expensive than Enagix, which are almost all of them, and a lot of them produce low ORPs too. So in my opinion, distributors should just stick to telling people about the minerals it contains and the optimal hydration it offers, as Enagix states. If you see distributors making health claims on social media like the ones shown on the screen, it might be helpful to privately message the person and tell them that it's against Enagix policies and FTC guidelines to make those claims, then if they block you, don't be surprised. You can report them, their full name, maybe their social media username if you don't know their name, to Enagix compliance department, compliance at Enagix.com. They likely won't respond to you ever because Enagix customer service, from my experience and what I've heard from others, is absolutely horrible. So then you can spend months trying to get a response like I did. I emailed them regarding income claims though, but you know, someday I'll get to the health claims. <laughs> so maybe you'll have a live chat on the Enagic website like I did and maybe someone will give you a district manager's email and they'll actually respond to you saying that they'll make sure they get reported to the compliance department, meaning nothing will ever be done. If you want to save yourself some time though, since Enagic doesn't put any effort into enforcing anything, you can just report distributors or Enagic directly to the FTC who also probably won't do anything because they have bigger fish to fry and can't babysit every person in a small MLM who can't figure out how to follow the rules. In my opinion, MLM companies and multi-level marketers alike don't care when they're not following the rules. As long as they don't face any consequences, it really only benefits their business. There's a lot of other ridiculous stuff that goes on in MLMs because these businesses make people do crazy things. So let's take a closer look at the multi-level marketing aspect of Enagic and Kong and Water. Raise your hand if you wanna get rich. All right. No, um, how is this not a pyramid scheme? All right, let me explain it again. Enagic folks generally prefer to ignore you if you bring up anything about it being a pyramid scheme they know it's not one, just like they know it's not an MLM. But you know what is a pyramid scheme? Your nine to five, uh-oh. It seems to me that people in MLMs and even people in the anti-MLM community, and then of course everyone in between, like no one really knows what a pyramid scheme is. Simply being able to draw a triangle around a business structure does not make something a pyramid scheme, it makes it a hierarchy. Quick middle school geometry lesson, a triangle is a two dimensional shape, a pyramid is a three dimensional shape. So not only is this not a pyramid scheme, it's not even a pyramid. These are pyramids. I think the best way to start this out is by looking at single level direct selling, multi-level marketing, and pyramid schemes like they're on a spectrum. MLM is part of direct selling, but it's different from single level direct selling where 100% of income is made through product sales and 0% is made through recruiting. It's a single level, so you have no upline or downline, and you aren't trying to recruit your customers to become salespeople like you. You also don't have to pay the company to be able to work for them like you do in an MLM. Most of these sites want you to pay a fee for working with them, which is a big red flag that it is a scam. You should never have to pay for a job. This is what direct sales looked like before multi-level marketing companies started using the term direct sales in order to escape the negative connotation that MLM has. In multi-level direct sales, you're not only making money from your sales, but you have the ability to recruit people to your downline to make sales, which you also make money from. So you have multiple levels of distributors. The Congo girls I've been following will always say, you know, in Enagic, you don't have to stock inventory, you can't de-rank, you can pass your upline in rank, 
and therefore it's not an MLM. But all of these things are characteristics of some MLMs. They're not defining factors of what an MLM is. I will say that from my research, Enagic does seem a lot better than many MLMs because you don't have to stock up on product. You don't have to make certain amount of sales by the, by the end of the month or you lose your rank. But at the end of the day, it's still an MLM. And the nature of MLMs makes distributors act in very predatory ways and causes some level of harm to a lot of the people who purchase the products and join the business. Now the line between MLM and pyramid scheme is not super well defined and I think that's where the confusion comes in and people start saying every MLM is a pyramid scheme or on the other hand it can't be a pyramid scheme because those are illegal or a pyramid scheme is where no products are sold and our company sells products. From my research none of those are true. A company is technically not a pyramid scheme until it is determined to be so in court, innocent until proven guilty. Amway is an example of an MLM that was taken to court and determined not to be an illegal pyramid scheme and just because something is illegal doesn't mean it can't exist or doesn't happen. Every MLM that was determined to be a pyramid scheme existed for years before that ruling and there have been companies that sold products that were determined to be pyramid schemes because there are no product pyramid schemes but there are also product based pyramid schemes. The first case of this was the 1975 Costco case. In it, the FTC defined a pyramid scheme as characterized by the payment by participants of money to the company in return for which they receive the right to sell a product and the right to receive in return for recruiting other participants into the program rewards which are unrelated to sale of the product to ultimate users. That's not the easiest to understand though, so let's look at some other ways it's explained. According to the FBI, in pyramid schemes, the real profit is earned not by the sale of the product, but by the sale of new distributorships. The FTC also lists some warning signs of a pyramid scheme. Promoters make extravagant promises about your earning potential. Promoters emphasize recruiting new distributors for your sales network as a real way to make money. They say, walk away. In a legitimate MLM program, you should be able to make money just by selling the product. Promoters play on your emotions or use high pressure sales tactics, maybe saying you'll lose the opportunity if you don't act now and discourage you from taking time to study the company. Distributors buy more products than they want to use or can resell just to stay active in the company or to qualify for bonuses or other rewards. So in essence, if distributors can't make good money from just making sales and need to rely on recruiting, then the company would likely be determined to be a pyramid scheme if taken to court. This is why people in the anti-MLM community tend to feel that all MLMs are pyramid schemes. I've done a lot of research on MLMs and various MLM companies for this video, and what you begin to notice is that the majority of distributors focus on recruitment because that's where the money's at, and all the ones at the top of the pyramid are people who have huge downlines because they focused on recruiting. Like the breakaway movement, there are tons of platforms that train people how to make this into a business and they're certainly not going to make as much money if they're only selling to people who don't plan to do any selling themselves. Since the definition is far from black and white and I'd assume many statistics need to be presented in court and in order to make any determination, many people who pay attention to the MLM world feel that since all MLMs do seem recruitment driven that they're there for all pyramid schemes. As mentioned earlier, Enagic is quite different from the other MLMs that I've looked into like Arbonne, Monet, Young Living, doTERRA, Beachbody, Avon, Mary Kay, etc who all allow you to buy products without having a distributor's ID or name. Or with these companies, you can buy a product through a distributor but you do not then by default become a distributor yourself. But with Enagic, every sale you make technically is a recruitment. There's no way to distinguish between the two, so to determine if you could do well in the business without recruiting is almost nonsensical. I do think since you're selling high ticket items, you could make a decent amount of money through just selling the product to people who don't wanna do the business, but it's way harder than people think. You have to be a really good salesperson, and I'll go into this a lot more in my next video on the breakaway movement. But even if you could make money through just selling, you technically can't make any money without recruiting, so I have no idea what that means in terms of whether or not Enagic is a pyramid scheme. If it is one, that's obviously bad because they're illegal for good reason, but at the same time, you actually have a better chance of making money in a classic no product pyramid scheme than you do in an MLM. According to the FTC, you have a 99.6% chance of losing money in an MLM. 99.6% chance. Only 0.4% of people are making any money in MLMs and most of them aren't making that much. You're 25 times more likely to profit from a pyramid scheme than an MLM 
and you're even more likely to profit from gambling. As you can see though, it's specified this is talking about recruitment-driven MLMs, but the same person who compiled this information, John Taylor, also evaluated over 350 MLM compensation plans and determined that every single one was recruitment-driven. And guess who was one of those? Let's take a close look at the world's best compensation plan. If you don't understand it, that's okay. MLM comp plans are the most convoluted things in the world. I mean, it took 2.5 years for Nagic to design theirs, but I'll do my best to explain it simply. In Nagic, there are six basic compensation levels and then extra stuff after that. Starting with the basic part of the comp plan, the ranks are 1A through 6A. You start out at 1A, then once you've made three sales, you rank up to 2A, 11 sales gets you to 3A, 21 to 4A, 51 to 5A, and then 101 gets you to 6A. Your direct sales, aka you selling directly to someone, and your indirect sales, or someone in your downline making sales, both count as your sales. So you can have three sales even if you only made one sale, but that person you sold to made two sales. In order to rank up, however, you must make a direct sale. So if you sold to someone who made two sales, you do have three sales, but you won't rank up to 2A until your next direct sale. You also do not make money on everyone in your downline. This is where the eight point system comes in. Each rank represents how many points you get per sale. If you're 2A, you get two points per sale. If you're 6A, you get six points per sale. A point is basically equal to the 1A commission for a given product. So as we can see here with the K8, at rank 1A, you make $340 per sale, which is the amount of one point for the K8. At 2A, you receive two points. So that's 340 times two, so 680. At 3A, you make three points, 4A, four points, and so on. In total, only eight points are given out. So if you are 2A and you make a sale, you'll receive two of those eight points. Say your direct upline, the person who sold the machine to you is 4A. They will then receive four of those remaining six points, leaving only two left for their direct upline. Since those three people are the only ones paid commission for that sale, those are the only people where that will count as a sale for them. As you can see, the compensation plan is very alluring to many people. They look at it and think, wow, after only 11 sales, I can be making over a thousand dollars per sale. That'll be a piece of cake. But you're not selling lipsticks or protein shakes. These are $5,000 machines. I've been researching this company and following distributors since January of this year, and I can tell you the majority are struggling to make sales. I've heard from multiple people that on average, it takes two to nine months to make your first sale. And for some, it takes over a year. And when it takes a person a long time to make sales, they're gonna be making less money on their indirect sales. Enagic's policies and procedures state that if you do not have a direct sale within six months, but you have at least one sale within two years, you're qualified to receive 50% of the full commission 6A educational allowance and or incentive. This status is called D0. If you do not have a direct sale within two years, you are not qualified to receive any commission, 6A educational allowance and or incentive. This status is called FA0. I spoke to an Enagic employee on their live chat on their website and they gave me a little bit of clarification on this. So take the D0 status for example. If you don't make a direct sale for six months, you'll then start to receive only 50% commission on any direct sales that your downline is making until your next direct sale. You'd also receive 50% on the bonuses and incentives listed, although I don't know what counts as the incentives because I asked the person like 15 times and they wouldn't give me an answer and told me I had to ask a distributor. Once you hit 6A, you cannot rank up unless you have recruited people to do the business because from then on, you rank up by getting people in your downline to rank up. On these misleading graphics, they list that you get a $3,000 bonus for hitting 6A, 6,000 at the next level, etc. This is true only if you make 10 machine sales in the qualifying month. After 6A, the next rank is 6A2. To achieve that rank, you must have two people in your downline who are 6A. To hit the next rank, 6A2-2, you must have two people who are 6A, and that goes on and on. 6A2-3, 6A2-4, 6A2-5, etc. are all achieved by having two people in your downline that are the rank directly below it. You also receive residual income monthly for life once you hit 6A2-3, which can be passed down to your children when you die. Everyone's goal seems to be hitting 6A or 6A2-3 and getting that 5K monthly check for life, and they all truly believe that they will do that. 
I think that's unlikely though. Enagic has these newsletters called Enagic Global eFriends, and at the end of each month, they list every single person in the company who has hit 6A or any rank above 6A for each month. I went through these and tallied up the list of 6A and above 6A for one month each quarter of the year, starting with the earliest one I could find, which was July of 2015, and going to the first quarter of 2020. I've heard that there are over a million distributors or people who have bought the machine, but I'm not sure how many people are actively trying to make it into a business. I would assume probably in the 10,000s somewhere. But here is the graph I made. The green shows 6A. 51 was the lowest amount of people to hit that in a month, and 109 was the highest of the months that I looked at. The average was 80, and for the ranks above 6A, the purple shows the lowest was 22, the highest was 54, the average was 35. What this definitely shows though, especially when you put the lines of best fit in there, is that even though I'd assume there are more people e each year buying the machines and doing the business, the amount hitting 6A and above isn't growing at all. Distributors have a way to explain this lack of growth though. It's because Big Pharma is suppressing information about ionized water to make people more skeptical of it. Yet if someone's talking about how popular Kangen water is becoming, that's proof of its magical abilities. So there's an explanation for if things are going good or if things are going bad, and both are proof that Kangen water is amazing. One thing you should be aware of is that the residual income is not guaranteed none of the income is. Enagic could stop the direct selling model and the distributorship program whenever they want with so little as just sending out an email a couple of weeks before to the distributors. Mary Kay, a much bigger MLM than Enagic, did this recently in Australia and New Zealand. And there will be a point in time where they can no longer afford to give out these huge bonuses and residual income that's inevitable because of the MLM model. Eventually the demand will flatten out and then it will start to drop and then they'll no longer be able to afford to hand out $80,000 a month to the people at the top. Many Enagic training platforms encourage people to invest in something they call the trifecta, which is purchasing a K8 for $4,980 and a Nespa for $2,890 and the Ukon turmeric for $760, which when you add all that up and then add in like the taxes and shipping and handling and stuff, comes out to around $10,000, easily one of the most expensive MLM buy-ins out there. But anyways, that's a basic overview of the compensation plan. Enagic and distributors and training platforms like Breakaway know that when people hear about the comp plan, they're gonna think, wow, I can be making over $1,000 per sale and I can get to the top ranks of this company with just 101 sales and I don't even have to make all those myself. And the distributors will say, I know it's literally the easiest entrepreneurial journey on the planet. We're selling high ticket items and the system we use is 90% automated. So it's literally so easy. The 10% that's not automated though is where you have to convince people to spend this kind of money on a water machine. But don't worry, as long as you constantly brag about how much you or someone in your upline makes, even though it's against FTC guidelines and Enagix policies to do so, and form fake, genuine connections to get people to trust you, it really shouldn't be too hard because it's not about selling the product, it's about selling the lifestyle. Also, there's plenty of financing options and some distributors even encourage you to falsify financial information, aka commit fraud, in order to get approved for a credit card. So as long as you abandon your morals, you'll do fine in this business. But this doesn't just apply to Enagic, it's the same in all MLMs. Every MLM changes the way its distributors act and it's usually not for the better. I wanna make it clear that I'm not trying to generalize every person in MLM. There are certainly a lot of people who this doesn't apply to. It's usually the higher ups where this occurs more because unless you have a big social media following at the start of your journey, in my opinion, in order to get to the top, you usually have to do some unethical or at the very least, shady stuff to get there. It all starts out with cold messaging, which is just messaging someone you went to high school with or met at a barbecue once or don't even know and telling them that you have this amazing business opportunity that they would be so good at. The Enagic groups I've looked at don't encourage this and tend to do paid and organic advertising. Paid obviously being buying ads on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest. You're actually not allowed to advertise MLMs on Facebook or Instagram, but they find sneaky ways to get theirs approved. Then organic advertising is basically using your posts on social media to get people to message you wanting to do what you're doing. I followed a lot of girls mainly for research for these videos that share about their digital nomad lifestyles, staying at expensive Airbnbs in Bali and Greece and Hawaii, always posting about how they just made another five-figure month. 
they're just living this amazing life and scam i mean helping people and only working five hours a week and they're always on the beach mlmers also love to slyly guilt trip moms with young children by talking about how they get to stay at home and be with their kids all day because of this amazing business i can't say this is how all enagic distributors market some do in-person marketing they set up little stands or demos at events or they try to talk to every person they ever meet about the water or the business turning every interaction into a sales pitch many mlmers use every situation as a sales pitch from preying on cancer patients to preying on people who've lost their jobs due to the pandemic to using the murder of george floyd to get people to buy mascara nothing is off limits the amount of anadric distributors i've seen trying to capitalize off people who have lost their jobs due to the pandemic in the past few months is absolutely disgusting to target people who are in extremely vulnerable and desperate places and get try to get them to join an industry where 99.6 percent of people don't make a single penny and then convince them to drop five to ten thousand dollars which they usually don't even have so they have to go into debt or into more debt to join a company where many people don't even make their first sale for months or over a year I mean, that is just extremely, extremely disgusting. And then for these people to brag about how much more money they've been making due to the pandemic, it's just so slimy and gross. I can't fathom how anyone could do this. But they're taught that, you know, those who don't make money, well, they just didn't work hard enough. They didn't want it enough. They were lazy. Some MLMers can be pretty nasty when someone in their downline decides to quit and will make them feel like failures. So many multi-level marketers who leave never end up sharing their story because they feel guilty or embarrassed that they, of the things they did or that they were even in MLM to begin with. Because once you're out of the MLM, that's when you really start to realize that you or the other people were doing things that really weren't okay. And if you do speak out, well, you're just a hater and your opinion doesn't matter because you're jealous of the people who did well. And if you've never been in an MLM and criticized one, you're also a hater, but your opinion doesn't matter because you've never been in an MLM, so you just don't know what you're talking about. To many of them, anyone who isn't supportive of MLMs is a hater. Or if any of your friends or family don't support you joining one, they're toxic and need to be cut out of your life. This leads to so many MLMers cutting ties with people who truly care about them and just didn't want them to join an MLM because they know what these companies do, and then replacing those people with their new tribe, aka the other people in the MLM but they'll likely get kicked out of this tribe that will pretend to love them unconditionally if they ever decide to leave. In reality, it is hard to sell MLM products and recruit people. And in Enagic, you're not selling lotions to people every few months. You're selling one machine and that person's not gonna buy another one for 25 to 30 years. But in the beginning, they lure you in by saying, oh, it's so easy, anyone can do it. Even if you just have an hour a day to set aside to work on this business, you know, you can be successful. You can have this as a little side hustle. But then once you're in the MLM, the narrative will always change to if you're not seeing results, it's because you're not working hard enough. You have to be spending every spare second you have to work on this business if you want to see results, okay? Stop complaining. I don't care if your dog is sick and dying. You better be at the vet in the waiting room on your computer cold messaging people. Because the reality is very, very, very few people across all MLMs will ever make a decent income if they're not spending every second they have on this business. And on top of working so much, they're usually doing some shady stuff some of which i've already gotten into but others i'll talk about in the next video in the beginning you're competing with all the people who have more followers more connections and more experience i mean who wants to sign up under someone and be coached by someone who has 500 Instagram followers and has made two sales when they can sign up under someone with 18,000 followers living the life that they want and hit 6A in three months and has made $80,000 in a month before? I mean, everyone's gonna choose the second person. And then you also have to put a ton of time into learning about the water and the business. And even then you probably still won't know what the heck you're talking about because they only encourage you to do one-sided research. My impression is that a lot of these people really only focus on making sales. They really don't care about the science and the business model as much they just care about making money but that's just because they care so much about you because they know what it's like to be where you are that's something they'll say because that's something they're trained to say they want to relate to you make you feel understood 
If you feel like they have been where you are, then you're more likely to be able to picture yourself being where they are now. They reel you in with emotions, not logic, and many will discourage you from doing further research. They'll say, just jump in, you know, don't wait, what are you waiting for? And when the time comes when the market becomes so saturated, it'll be even harder to make sales. An example of this is looking at the sections of the newsletters that say who hit 6A and above. You would think since Enagic is a Japanese company that is said to be really popular in Japan, that we would see a lot of Enagic distributors in Japan hitting these ranks, but I've looked through every one of these lists and there's hardly any people from Japan listed in them. As you can see, Enagic is very popular within other Asian countries, but even looking at the names of people in the US or Canada, these are mainly Southeast Asian names. So either Enagic actually isn't very popular in Japan and there's not one out of every five households that owns one, or there, it is so popular that the market has already become so saturated that not many people are buying them and therefore it's really hard to make sales. It's for these reasons and far more that so many people dislike multi-level marketing. These businesses know about all these things, it's not secret information. But they don't care because when you have a product that doesn't sell itself and you need to rely on turning your customers into salespeople so they can spread false, harmful information, a multi-level marketing model is the best way to do that. When a company has expensive products with very little evidence to back up any health benefits so they can't make very enticing claims themselves, getting people who are susceptible to pseudoscience and aren't very educated on how to do proper research is going to be the best way to do that. MLMs are the best way to sell quackery. Not that I'm saying Enagix products are quackery, but quack products are best sold in multi-level marketing companies. I highly recommend checking out these pages of quackwatch.org, 10 ways to avoid being quacked, science of a quack medical device, how quackery sells, and distinguishing science and pseudoscience. Also, if you want to see more about how atrocious MLM income disclosure statements are, there's a list of a ton of them on this site. And some other things you can read if you're bored is this super long article called All You Need to Know About MLM. And there are two papers by John Taylor, the guy who's the source for the stats regarding MLMs versus pyramid schemes. The first is the case for and against multi-level marketing. I was only able to find chapters seven through nine online, but they're all on the FTC's website, so pretty reputable. He also has a paper on who profits from multi-level marketing, which is where he shares his results from speaking with tax preparers in Utah. This is a really informative video from a woman who was at the top of an MLM and left. Last Week Tonight with John Oliver has a really good video on multi-level marketing. And on Netflix, there's a documentary on the MLM Herbalife that I've heard is really good. So check out those resources if you're interested. There's so much more I wish I could say on this subject, but hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight to the side of a magic and Kong and water that the distributors aren't gonna talk about or don't know about. Again, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from buying a Kung machine or any ionizer. I just wanted to put out the information I've come across so you can make a more informed decision. Do I plan to buy a machine? No. Would I ever encourage someone to buy one? No. Would I ever encourage anyone to buy an MLM product? No. Unfortunately, I assume for anyone watching this who's into Kung water, Probably nothing I say is gonna matter because experience tops all, especially since I haven't tried the water myself. My opinion doesn't matter to some, but I ask for anyone who feels that way to just really look at the logic of that. You don't have to try a product personally to be able to form an opinion on it. And there are miracle claims for so many different products that were eventually proven to be snake oil or pseudoscience. We're simply not good at making accurate judgments of events based on personal experiences. You know, there's tons of stories of people who say they've been abducted by aliens, yet most people don't believe those because we just don't have good evidence yet. Yet is the key word. Maybe we will in the future. Maybe we'll have evidence that condom water is the first cure-all product and is actually backed up by science. But until then, it's completely logical and reasonable to be a skeptic regarding the claims about a miracle product that just doesn't seem to have many good studies backing it up. And when so many of the claims made about the water are so easily debunked, how are we supposed to believe anything these distributors are saying? How are we supposed to trust that these people truly care about putting out accurate information when so many of them seem to be completely ignorant to their own company and its products? In part two of this series, we're gonna dive deep into the Breakaway Movement, an Enagic training platform that's been gaining popularity since it was founded in 2019 and tends to attract mainly young girls who are into new age spirituality, a community that's particularly captivated by pseudoscience. This group uses the law of attraction to convince its members that they can manifest whatever they want as long as they want it hard enough. 
On the outside, they come off as a group of loving, compassionate people whose main motivation is to heal the world through Kong and water. But the deeper you dig, the more you see the manipulation, the lies, the greed, and the cult-like tactics employed by some of the top dogs of the movement that are hidden under facade of a caring community. It's a very fascinating tale, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you watched that one, I hope you enjoy it too, or at least the parts of it that don't make you lose faith in humanity.